I'd invite you to uh, bow your heads in prayer. Lord, we ask you to be present with us now. We ask you to open our hearts and our minds to your word. Open your word to our hearts and minds, that we may feed on, that we may know your will, that we may be your people. Amen. I feel like I'm in an attitude here. Uh, uh, and just in the Remembrance Day theme, very quickly, I want to say something that has implications uh, for the Chinese community in Vancouver. Um, on Thursday, a chap named George Chow had his 99th birthday. On Friday, he died. Why am I mentioning George to you? Because he was the oldest Chinese-Canadian veteran of the Second World War. And he was to the, uh, the last time I saw him was just a year ago. And he, to it, to the end, he was a gentle man. So I wanted to, to just mention that. Um, unlike George, though, um, the events that we've seen in the world around us in the past while have been anything but gentle. I mean, we've We've been struck by news from places as far uh, from us as Aylmer, Ontario, or Vienna in Austria, Kabul in Afghanistan, or of course many places around the United States. And all of those things have been anything but examples of gentleness. So when it comes to today's uh, passage, uh, well, now we've moved into verse 23 of Galatians chapter 5. We come to, in the English Standard Version translation and most modern translations, we come to the word, the term gentleness. Uh, proatis is the Greek word that's behind it. And for centuries, starting with the Reformation era English translations of the Bible, Proates was, regardless of where it was used in the New Testament, it was always translated as meekness. But in more recent years, particularly all the translations have flowed out since the Second World War, uh, sometimes, most of the time it's translated as gentleness, but sometimes it's translated as meekness. And that's because the, the difference has to do with the Greek word itself. The Greek word itself is actually very hard to translate into the English language. Uh, in everyday Greek in Paul's day, uh, proates meant the avoidance of unnecessary anger, the avoidance of self-assertion. A few centuries earlier, the great Greek philosopher Aristotle had defined proates, what we think of as gentleness, as being always angry at the right time and never at the wrong time. So these ancient Greek uses lead us to see, to uh, uh, sympathize with the English language biblical scholars who are trying to translate this word. Now, when it comes to the ancient English uh, uh, translation uh, as meekness, which was the King James Version, which was the Bible that was almost everybody used when I was growing up, uh, meekness for, for me, meekness for my friends, was something of a problem. Why? Because by that time, in English language use, meek or meekness suggested submitting without resistance to anything, and that included submitting to wrongdoing. And to my friends, to me, that didn't seem quite Christian. And our problem as kids was further compounded by the fact that one of the favorite sayings about Jesus in Sunday school was to describe him as gentle Jesus, meek and mild. And my group of friends, we all knew the Bible narrative pretty well. 
and we couldn't for the life of us see how Jesus was meek and mild when he was throwing the money changers and the other merchants out of the temple. Something didn't quite work for us. So when we come to the present, what are we? What are we to make of that Greek word proatis? I'd suggest to you, and I'm going to do it, that if we think of gentleness, which is the, the primary translation these days, and meekness, which is the secondary translation, if we think of proatis in terms of each of these words, uh, it can give us some understanding of proatis as a fruit of the Spirit. Let's start with proatis as meekness. <clears throat> when you find meekness in, a new, in the New Testament these days, that translation of proatis is used when it's referring to a personal inner orientation. And in that way, it's following along with the idea of meekness in the Old Testament. Parates as meekness points to an attitude of complete submission to and dependence upon God. And in that way, as Paul uses it, it's the opposite of another Greek word, hubris, which of course has been completely adopted into the English language. In Paul's day, in Paul's day, hubris was a deliberate, arrogant defiance of God. Hubris was overstepping the limits set by God for human behavior. Hubris was a deliberate, conscious decision to depend upon self and not God. So we see from this that Parates as meekness is about God, it's not about self. It involves being teachable. In other words, being open to learning from God what he wants us to learn from himself, from his commandments. Parates as meekness means submitting to God, obeying God, willingly following God's plans, God's purposes. Quick examples, if you think, because we had a reading from Isaiah, well, think of chapter 6 in Isaiah where you have the call of God to Isaiah to be a prophet. And when God calls, what does Isaiah say? He says, here I am, send me. You see that, ab that attitude of complete submission to God, that complete dependence upon God. And that attitude made Isaiah teachable. You can't be a prophet without being teachable because you have to learn from God what God's will is for the people to whom you're prophesying. And Isaiah was teachable. And of course, we have that extensive book called Isaiah that, that uh, holds his teachings. Or in the New Testament, think of Mary, the mother of Jesus. When the angel Gabriel came to her, and told her of God's plan that she should be the mother of the Son of God, what does she say? She says, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. A little later in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, when he is pointing to meekness, he points to Jesus as the greatest possible example of meekness. This is what he writes in the second chapter of Philippians. Have this mind among yourselves, which is in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So there we have the prime example of Parates as meekness. But then there's the other translation. There's Parates translated as gentleness, which is what happens in Galatians. <clears throat> 
proatis translated as gentleness when it points to a person's attitude when dealing with other people. And in that way, proatis as gentleness is the fruit of one's life of proatis as meekness. Proatis as gentleness is the fruit of faithful submission and complete dependence upon God in all things. And in a very simple, simple way, it's seen in our being considerate in our dealings with others. Now, just to pull that apart a bit, Proatis as gentleness is actually a three-step process or of behaviors. And first of all, gentleness starts with assessing oneself soberly and realistically. The second step, Parates, is gentleness. We count ourselves as being less than others, count others as better than ourselves. And that leads to the third step, treating others as, excuse me, <clears throat> treating others as graciously as Christ has treated us. And when it comes to human behaviors, one comprehensive picture of gentleness, one comprehensive picture of dealing graciously with others is found right early in Jesus' teachings. It's in Matthew chapter 5, and it's the teachings we call the Beatitudes. So th think of this, listen to this as a picture of gentleness. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of of heaven. There's a picture of gentleness there, one picture of gentleness, and it shows us that gentleness, the fruit of the spirit of gentleness in our lives, means taking action, not living passively. All of those whom Jesus describes in the Beatitude as blessed are people who have taken action. Now, sometimes the actions are internal actions. For example, when he talks about blessed are the poor in spirit, that's an internal action. Comparable to meekness, really, in a whole lot of ways. But sometimes the action that makes a person blessed is something that becomes external. And I'd point here to you uh, to... Uh, where he says, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Anyone who hungers and thirsts for righteousness can't sit still. <laughs> A person who hungers and thirsts for righteousness always takes action. And as verse 10, the last of the Beatitudes I read to you, points out that working for God's justice in the world is not necessarily well received <laughs> because remember it says uh, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness gentleness when it's something other than a mishy-mashy nothingness is not always appreciated so that's one picture of gentleness I'd, I'd take you back now to Philippians because there we have a description of gentleness, and Paul is telling his readers that gentleness, gentleness 
means living in such a way that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is seen in us. I'm going to read that again, but I'm going to read an expanded part of that passage. Paul writes, Do nothing from selfish ambition or or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Look again, think again of how Paul begins this passage. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Paul says that the gentleness that we see in Jesus, which also is often called grace, the gentleness we see in Jesus is the gentleness that is to be seen in our lives. When we see that gentleness in Jesus, when we are meek before God, that's when the fruit of gentleness will be seen in our lives. Amen.